following video clip shows where I've been working on with my PhD project to try and come up with a causality model based on the human factors analysis and classification system. Where the factors came from was by reviewing a number of papers which are shown above here. These are all colour coded throughout the model as I expand and contract areas. There are a number of factors that were listed within there that didn't make it into paper. The majority of these because they were outcomes or configurations and as such weren't a factor within the human factors analysis classification system. I'll now go through the different sections within the HVACs model and is split into three main arms. Um, I've added a fourth arm which is com peer and community influence but the traditional model is individual, supervisory and organisational layers and then the individual is split into active and latent failures. The hardest one to try and understand was violations because a lot of those are intent um, or context specific but these were examples that came up within the uh, literature as the sort of things that go on. There are errors, but they have an intent within them. Looking at the errors themselves, there are a variety of different errors, perception errors, decision errors, skill-based errors, knowledge-based and rule-based. So, colour codings here, again, these are different examples. You can end up with a number of papers showing errors from within the same thing. I try to aggregate these together. You go to rule based errors, again different things. And In the main the only real rule you have is a failure to check. Um, do a buddy check, a self check your uh, or buddy check your uh, make sure that everything's sorted. There aren't many other rules within diving, one of which could be analyzing gas but it depends whether or not it's taught look at knowledge based again these were sort of not familiar or you know a lot of it is context and driven and depends on what the diver has been taught as to whether or not they've made a uh, knowledge based error or not poor dive planning covers a lot of uh, issues within here consumption of gas choosing the right gas and such like and then skill based errors i broke these down into incorrect in water skills for example a DSMB launch or pre-dive skills so this is where the majority of the uh, failure causalities or um, influences are within the literature skills errors and we look at pre-dive weighting incorrect analysis again poor dive planning depends whether or not being taught or not and so there could be that they didn't know about it um, and they've just done it properly or incorrectly. If I move down to the latent failures in effect what the diver does to set them up for a f themselves up for a fall we've got condition of operators, personal factors and then some environmental factors. So we'll look at the condition of the operators to start with. Their mental state, complacency appears uh, as could be overconfidence, looking at fatigue these ones in green came from a civil aviation paper that looked at um, the inferred peer pressure that's uh, present. Um, Normalisation of deviance is where uh, failures are accepted but nothing has happened, uh, a fault are accepted and nothing's happened and then it becomes the norm. Stress could be direct internal stress panic, anxiety, stress, what you place on yourself, or external, were you tired, fatigued. These are potentially linked to other areas, uh, but I decided to break these out into two sections. Physiological say, state, well in fact we've got a physical and mental limitations. Do you have a, a health issue prior to going diving? This appears in quite a bit of the literature lack of physical fitness to recover and it's not just themselves but another diver a physiological state 
lots of these. So poor physical fitness is just generally rather than being able to recover uh, another diver. Alcohol, drugs appear in some of the literature. Let's do other of these things. I created a, uh, a breathing gases section and then nitrogen loading and tissue pressures because these aren't necessarily, um, they, they contribute to an outcome, um, but they are based on that nitrogen physiological problems or challenges provided by diving. I've already covered these. So look at the personnel factors, crew resource management, communication, pre-dive, during the dive. That also covers people's uh, familiarity with diving equipment, how do the clips work, and what to do in an emergency. Failure to use all the resources around, not teamwork itself, um, but somebody else who's there who can do something for you. Misplaced motivation, goal oriented diving, going to recover something at the expense of um, safety, going below minimum gas limits to take a photo or such like. Look at physical and uh, mental preparedness. Haste is a, an interesting one, the same with the experience. There are a number of uh, issues that come up here. And inexperience itself isn't a, um, uh, a, a, I suppose a causal factor. It's a category which can be fed into. Equipment preparedness, making sure that your kit is serviceable, it works, and you've tested it. But again, that could be a violation. You know, all of the agencies say make sure your equipment is serviced regularly. Training and skills. Fairly similar, but this is at very much at a personal level, um, and it could be linked to the, um, the section earlier on about skill based errors. Then we look at the environment, the physical environment. These are broken down into a number of sections, looking at the surface conditions, in water, temperature, depth, natural hazards that are there, technical environment. Equipment malfunctions don't appear that often uh, of their own um, cause. They, they do fail, but it's normally because they haven't been maintained or they've been used incorrectly, which again could be considered a violation. Gas contamination. Surface vehicles, a boat, um, you could end up being struck by it uh, if you're not uh, properly managed or properly prepared. And then the social environment, let's say, was a new one for HX, looking at um, a violations led by somebody else, and, and it could induce others to make the same mistakes. Persuasion by the peer to under undertake a mistake or a poor practice, even though you know as the operator that something is wrong. And then um, social influence, watching somebody do something um, and using that information to say, they've done it, it's okay, I'll do it now. So within the individual layer, there are a considerable number of factors that come to play. When we look at the supervisory area, this is predominantly in a, an organisational structure. So you have instructors, dive masters, guides, and there's inadequate formal and informal supervision. And I don't have much evidence. I don't have much evidence for the inadequate informal supervision, apart from um, really nobody assistance when getting prepared. And this is all about the teamwork side of it. But then when we look at formal supervision, these purple sections are the. the um, uh, the words that have come out of the, the HVACs modified towards diving. Unsurprisingly, there's not a lot of this data in the incident reports uh, and the literature because it's not an area that's uh, studied, but has a, from examples in medicine, aviation, petrochemical, has a major influence as to the safety delivered at the front line and by the user itself. Again, these are all other failures that are here. Failure to correct a problem could be the training material, training manuals. Um, the bit about uh, failure to suspend or fail an at-risk diver or not teaching them properly in a course 
you know, the majority of courses are commercially driven, and all the technical agencies are changing their attitudes in that you earn your certification, not that you pay for it. So you've paid your money, I want a card. Well, no, actually, no, you didn't complete the training. Um, and, and that attitude probably needs to come down into the recreational diving community. Supervisory violations, letting something go ahead when it really shouldn't do. If you look at the organisational, there's very little in the literature that covers these areas. And so these are taken out of the human factors analysis classification model um, and then diving specific examples put in here. There has been a considerable amount of evidence to show that a lot of these organisational influences do impact what happens at the front line. And we need to understand what the impact is on sport diving and the user as to what's delivered uh, as, as the training materials uh, to the, the diver during training. This is a section that I don't have any information on. Um, because it's not again not captured in the data but I believe that there are influences um, social influences which you already captured in the latent uh, failures earlier on but I'm not sure if this sits here uh, at the uh, the top level As you can see there are a number of factors at play and so when somebody says what do you find is the, the major cause of uh, diving incidents, I don't know, because you can't just nail one of these, you know, you can't just nail it down to one thing. There are a whole number of factors at play, and a lot of them are context-specific to the diver themselves. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.